Hello students, in this module we will study about the different types of ATP powered pumps. Cellular membranes regulate the traffic of molecules into and out of cells and their organelles. This is achieved by using membrane transport proteins which mediate the transport of these metabolites through the membrane's hydrophobic interior. One such class of membrane transport proteins is the ATP powered pumps. So in this module, we will be learning about the four main classes of ATP powered pumps and their functions. During active transport, ATP powered pumps use the energy released by hydrolysis of ATP to transport ions and various small molecules across membranes against their concentration gradient. All ATP powered pumps are transmembrane proteins with one or more ATP binding sites located on subunits or segments of the protein that always face the cytosol. These proteins are also commonly called ATPases. They normally do not hydrolyze ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate unless ions or other molecules are simultaneously transported. Because of this tight coupling of ATP hydrolysis and transport, the energy released during ATP hydrolysis is not dissipated as heat, but it is used to move ions or other molecules uphill against an electrochemical gradient. There are four main classes of ATP powered pumps. They are B class, V class, and F class pumps, and ABC superfamily of transporters. The members of three classes, B, V, and F, and also some members of the ABC superfamily transport only ions. Most members of the fourth class, that is ABC superfamily, transport small molecules such as amino acids, sugars, peptides, lipids, and other small molecules including many types of drugs. Now let's study the P-class ion pumps. The family of active transporters called P-type ATPases are ATP-driven cation transporters that are reversibly phosphorylated by ATP as part of the transport cycle. Phosphorylation forces a conformational change that is central to moving the cation across the membrane. All P-class ion pumps possess two identical catalytic alpha subunits each containing an ATP binding site. Most of them also have two smaller beta subunits, which usually have regulatory functions. During transport, at least one of the alpha subunits gets phosphorylated and the transported ion moves through the phosphorylated subunit. The amino acid sequences around the phosphorylated residues are homologous in different pumps. Let's study some examples of B-class ion pumps. The sodium-potassium ATPase. The sodium-potassium ATPase is present in the plasma membranes of all eukaryotic cells. This pump generates the low cytosolic sodium and high cytosolic potassium concentrations typical of animal cells. For each molecule of ATP converted to ADP and inorganic phosphate, the transporter moves two potassium ions inward and three sodium ions outward across the plasma membrane. Because three sodium ions move outward for every two potassium ions that move inward, the process is electrogenic. That is, it creates a net separation of charge across the membrane. The result is a transmembrane potential of about minus 50 to minus 70 millivolts. 
that is inside negative relative to outside, which is characteristic of most animal cells and essential to the conduction of action potentials in neurons. The active transport of sodium ions and potassium ions is of great physiological significance. The sodium-potassium gradient in animal cells controls cell volume, renders neurons and muscle cells electrically excitable, and drives the active transport of sugars and amino acids. A low sodium ion concentration and a high potassium ion concentration inside the cell is maintained by the sodium-potassium ATPase. And this is essential for regulation of enzymes required for protein synthesis. Now let's look at the calcium ATPase. The cytosolic concentration of free calcium ions is far lower than that in the surrounding medium. Because of the ubiquitous occurrence of inorganic phosphates at millimolar concentrations in the cytosol, it is necessary to maintain a low cytosolic calcium ion concentration. Otherwise, inorganic phosphate combines with calcium to form relatively insoluble calcium phosphates. So calcium ions are pumped out of the cytosol by this P-type plasma membrane calcium ion pump. The activity of plasma membrane is regulated by calmodulin, which is a calcium ion binding protein present in the cytosol. A rise in the calcium ions in the cytosol triggers binding of calcium ions to calmodulin, which in turn triggers the activity of the plasma membrane calcium pump. As a result, the export of calcium ions to the cell accelerate, thus quickly restoring the low concentration of free cytosolic calcium ions. Another P-type calcium pump in the endoplasmic reticulum moves calcium ions from the cytosol into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, which is a compartment separate from the cytosol. In muscle cells, calcium ion is normally sequestered in a specialized form of endoplasmic reticulum called sarcoplasmic reticulum or SR. The release of the stored calcium ions via ion channels from the sarcoplasmic lumen to the cytosol causes muscle contraction. The calcium ion ATPase located in the SR membrane of skeletal muscle cells pumps calcium ions back into the lumen of the SR thereby inducing muscle relaxation. In the SR lumen, there are two proteins, calciquestrin and the so-called high-affinity calcium ion binding protein. These two proteins bind multiple calcium ions with high affinity. As a result, the concentration of free calcium ions in the SR vesicles is reduced. This reduces the calcium ion concentration gradient between the cytosol and the SR lumen and thus consequently reduces the energy needed to pump calcium ions into the SR lumen from the cytosol by the calcium pump. The activity of muscle calcium ATPase increases as free calcium ion in the cytosol rises. So the SR membrane calcium pump works in concert with the calcium pump in the plasma membrane to ensure that the cytosolic concentration of free calcium ions in resting muscle remains below 0.1 micromoles. For every complete cycle of transport by the calcium pump, hydrolysis of a phosphoanhydride bond in the ATP powers the pumping of two calcium ions against its concentration gradient. Other examples of P-class pumps are the hydrogen pump in the plasma membrane of plants and fungi and the hydrogen potassium pump present in the apical plasma membrane of mammalian stomach. Now let's study the V-class proton pumps. All V-class ATPases transport only hydrogen ions. These proton pumps are present in the membranes of lysosomes, endosomes, and plant vacuoles, and thus V for vacuolar. They function to acidify the lumen of these organelles. A low lysosomal pH is necessary for optimal function of the many proteases, nucleases, and other hydrolytic enzymes in the lumen of the organelle. On the other hand, the cytosolic pH needs to be maintained around pH 7 as the functions of cytosolic proteins are optimized at this pH 
and lowering the pH of the cytosol would lead to death of the cell. In order for an organelle lumen or extracellular space like the lumen of the stomach to become acidic, movement of protons must be accompanied either by number one, movement of equal number of anions like the chloride ions in the same direction or number two, movement of equal number of a different cation in the opposite direction. The first process occurs in lysosome and plant vacuoles, whose membranes contain V-class hydrogen ion ATPases and anion channels through which chloride ions move. The second process occurs in the linings of stomach, which contains a P-class hydrogen potassium pump, which pumps one hydrogen outward and one potassium inward. The structure of V-class pumps are more complicated than P-class pumps. They have two discrete domains, a cytoplasmic domain V1 and a transmembrane domain V0, with multiple subunits forming each domain. Binding and hydrolysis of ATP by subunits in V1 provide the energy for pumping hydrogen ions through the proton conducting channel in V0. Unlike P-class ion pumps, V-class proton pumps are not phosphorylated and dephosphorylated during proton transport. Now let's study the F-class proton pumps. The F-type ATPase active transporters play a central role in energy conserving reactions in mitochondria, bacteria and chloroplasts. The F-type ATPases catalyze the uphill transmembrane passage of protons driven by ATP hydrolysis. The term F-type originated in the identification of these ATPases as energy coupling factors. The f node integral membrane protein complex provides a transmembrane pore for protons and the peripheral protein F1 is a molecular machine that uses the energy of ATP to drive protons uphill into a region of higher hydrogen ion concentration. The F0 F1 organization of proton pumping transporters must have developed very early in evolution. UV bacteria such as E. coli use an F0 F1 ATPase complex in their plasma membrane to pump protons outward, and archaebacteria have a closely homologous proton pump, the A0 A1 ATPase. The reaction catalyzed by F type ATPases is reversible, so a proton gradient can supply uh, the energy to drive the reverse reaction, ATP synthesis. When functioning in this direction, the F-type ATPases are more appropriately named ATP synthases. ATP synthases are central to ATP production in mitochondria during oxidative phosphorylation and in chloroplasts during photophosphorylation, as well as in eubacteria and archaebacteria. The proton gradient needed to drive ATP synthesis is produced by other types of proton pumps powered by substrate oxidation or sunlight. Now let's study the fourth class, which is the ABC superfamily. The ABC superfamily of membrane transporters is a large family of ATP dependent transporters that pump amino acids peptides, proteins, metal ions, various lipids, bile salts, and many hydrophobic compounds, including drugs out of the cells against a concentration gradient. They are more diverse in function as compared to the other three classes of ATP-powered pumps. This class includes several hundred transport proteins found in organisms ranging from bacteria to humans. One ABC transporter in humans, the multi-drug transporter, MDR1, uh, which is now known as ABCB1, is responsible for the striking resistance of certain tumors to some generally effective anti-tumor drugs. MDR1 has a broad substrate specificity for hydrophobic compounds, including, for example, the chemotherapeutic drugs, adriamycin, doxorubicin and vinblastin. 
This protein uses the energy derived from ATP hydrolysis to export these drugs out of the cell. Thus, it prevents their accumulation within a tumor and blocks their therapeutic effects. MDR1 is an integral membrane protein with 12 transmembrane segments and two ATP binding domains or cassettes which give the family its name ATP binding cassette transporters. So ABC transport proteins contain two transmembrane T domains and two cytosolic ATP binding A domains. The two T domains form a ligand binding site in the middle of the plane of the membrane and form a passageway through which transported molecules cross the membrane. About 50 different mammalian ABC transporters are now recognized. Several are expressed in the liver, intestines and kidney where natural toxin and waste products are removed from the body. Several human genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis are associated with defective ABC proteins. Now we have come to the end of today's module. Let's summarize. Four classes of Transmembrane proteins couple the energy releasing hydrolysis of ATP with the energy requiring transport of substances against their concentration gradients. They are P, V, F class pumps, and ABC proteins. The sodium potassium ATPase of the plasma membrane and the calcium ion transporters of the sarcoplasmic and endoplasmic reticulums are examples of P type pumps. They undergo reversible phosphorylation during their catalytic cycle. F-type proton pumps, the ATP synthesis, are central to energy conserving mechanisms in mitochondria and chloroplasts. V-type pumps produce gradients of protons across some intracellular membranes and lysosomal and plant vacuolar membranes. And lastly, ABC transporters carry a variety of substrates including many drugs out of the cells. They include the bacterial amino acid and sugar permeases and about 50 mammalian transport proteins.